Ben purges his past, Jacob asks for help, and Locke goes to the grave. We'll have the inside scoop on all that and more in today's official Lost podcast, hosted by ABC.com. Well, it's finally official. Lost will go off the air in 2010. Executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse are here today to discuss that revelation, along with a few things that we learned about Ben and the Dharma Initiative. They'll also be taking your fan questions from ABC.com and tease next week's episode, Greatest Hits, which airs Wednesday, May 16th from 10 to 11 p.m. First up, though, we have this special interview with actor Dominic Monaghan. <laughs> Dominic Monaghan has always been a beloved member of the cast, but lately his character seems to have the Sword of Damocles hanging over him. The question that everyone wants to know is, can his character escape fate? But for Dominic, he's not as worried as some fans. Back at the beginning of the season, we asked him what he thought about the possibility of his character dying. You know, I don't mind. I just don't mind. It's, uh... It's not something that I think about, um... I like the show, I like being in Hawaii, I, I love the relationships that I've made with people. I don't think that if my character died, those relationships would dissolve. I think I would still have them. And, and ultimately, you know, this industry and my life is about the relationships that I forge, you know. For Dom, he's always viewed his roles as a chance to do something he's never done. Be well known for it, and then break the mold with something completely different. I'm not necessarily defined, I hope, by this character. You know, I'm defined by the fact that I'm an actor and this is a small facet in in my career and a great one and a peak and something that I enjoy but um, I would hate to think in 10 years time that people, you know, are still saying, oh, you're Charlie. The challenge for me at least that I set myself is what do the audience think that you are and how can you now prove that you are not that? You know, so in Rings it was a fantasy-based character, you know, more of a childlike, whimsical, sweet guy. And with Lost, it complemented it so well because it was a contemporary guy, dark, moody, sarcastic, broken. You know, it's such a worldly difference from the character that I played in Lord of the Rings. Next, you know, I have to think about playing someone who isn't like Charlie. You know, where do I go from there? And uh, as soon as the audience knows you as soon as they can pin something on you you know oh that's a Dominic Monaghan part or why didn't Dominic Monaghan play that part it's perfect for him as far as I'm concerned you you're kind of uh, failing as an actor you know I want them to continually be kind of intrigued and, and shocked like I didn't realize that he could play that you said doc sorry you shouted doc you knew even before we set off, you knew all this time, didn't you? Aye. Well, then why didn't you say anything? Because if I told you the truth, you wouldn't have come. Well, you needed me to come. Because I was part of your vision. You thought the only way you could get your girl back was if I took an arrow in the head. You're going to sacrifice me. The flashes don't happen exactly how I saw them. The picture changes. I was supposed to let you die, Charlie. We've worked together quite closely this year, Ian and I, and, you know, he goes for it and he commits, and and I would like to think that I do the same thing, and and I'm always kind of available for him whenever he needs me, and and he he is as well. And, um, and, you know, we talk about Marmite and wine gums and good bread and good butter that you don't get in America. And, you know, as, as two actors, I think we have a lot of respect for each other. Of course, the other actors in the cast also have a lot of respect for Dominic. As we've reported before, many of them actually turned to him for new music advice. So we thought it was only appropriate to find out what he's listening to right now. You know, maybe get some advice for ourselves. My love of music changes on a daily basis. I have my my standards that I always play. Um, But in terms of stuff that I'm listening to, I really like Imogen Heap right now. It's kind of fun. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the new Keen album, even though they get a lot of flack in the press for some reason because uh, they're girly boys, but they still make good music, so I don't really understand that. Um, Kasabian, Kasabian's new album I thought was, was smart. I really like Rayla Montaigne and Iron and & Wine. 
Obviously, Radiohead is like a standard. If you like music, you like Radiohead. Anyone who doesn't like Radiohead doesn't like music, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I like Tom York's new new album. Thought that was good. Uh, Corrine Bailey Ray, I'm really enjoying right now. So I'm always just looking for new stuff. I actually got given a gift last night that was fantastic by a girl in a in a crowd, which sounds like completely Hollywood, but it's true. Um, she gave me this CD and she was like, it's a gift. I went, oh, thanks. And I gave her a hug and I walked off and it was all um, jungle sounds from Borneo. So I got into my room last night and turned all the lights off and I was throwing water up into the air and I had this CD on with like jaguars and monkeys and birds and stuff. It was brilliant. Got naked, covered myself in mud. Felt like I was in Apocalypto. That's all the time we have now for Dominic and his Jungle Boogie. Instead, we now turn it over to executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Hughes to find out about their greatest hits. Hey, it's Carlton Hughes. Hi, Damon Lindelof here. And welcome to our podcast. It is our penultimate podcast. Yes, indeed. We will be coming to you next week, and uh, let, let, then we're going to let you watch the finale and... We're going on vacation. Yes, we're going on vacation after the finale, so we're just going to let it sit there and be picked apart, and we will not tell you what to think about it or answer any any more questions. In fact, you'll tell us what to think. You'll, yeah, they'll you'll tell, tell us, us what, what to think, think about That's it. That's good. We'll, we'll go do a Salinger-esque sort of departure. It's going to be very exciting. We have had a huge week. This was um, actually the... We, we, as you all probably know, have for a long time been trying to... Um, resolve the issue of when we would end the show. And I think everyone has, you know, obviously there's been a lot of anxiety. And I think behind a lot of these questions, you know, do you guys know where you're going? Are you making it up as you're going along? You know, do you have an ending for the show? I mean, what's underlying all those questions is a fear that, you know, it's not going to end well and that... Or it's not going to end, period. Right. And that'll just wither away. And, you know, it's really, really important to the two of us that we not, you know, sort of end the show... um, you know, after the show was re- was no longer relevant. I mean, we didn't want the end. See, there's the ringing phone. There Someone it is. Always asks That's about one the down. Phone. That's one down. So we basically, you know, it's really important to us that we could kind of, for many reasons, figure out what the end point was to kind of provide a certain measure of kind of confidence uh, for the fans. You know, we love the J.K. Rowling model. And, and uh, if you haven't heard specifically, we are going to be doing 48 episodes more of the show. Um, and that's going to break down over three seasons of 16 episodes each. We feel that the story that we've got to tell is, you know, is actually going to go um, sort of compartmentalize very nicely over that span of time. Yeah, I mean, you know, we as we started really focusing in on 48 episodes, we started thinking about the remaining story we had, and it kind of did fit nicely into three pods of 16 episodes. So we sort of feel that not only kind of in total episodes, but also in the sort of structural delivery of those episodes, we're really doing the right thing for the show. But you should know, we're only going to do 35 more podcasts (laughs) in in, in, in a separate deal that we reached this week. We just didn't feel there were as many podcasts left as there were episodes. episodes. So uh, we we definitely want to give a huge shout out though to Steve McPherson and Mark Pedowitz, the uh, people who run uh, ABC and I guess what is now called ABC Television Studios, formerly Touchstone Television. They're like Prince. Especially. They changed their name from Symbol to yes. back back to the, ABC TV. The studio formerly known as Touchstone, but you know, really without the vision and leadership of those guys. Uh, we never would have accomplished. Um, we never would have accomplished this. The fans don't care about when the show is going to end because they love it so much. Let's talk about what, what's going on right now, Carlton. You don't seem very energetic today, Dan. I mean, you I'm, seem a little. You seem a little down. I'm a little sleepy. Last night, uh, we watched the finale for the first time. All the way um, from start to finish. All the way from start to finish. We we just finished shooting it on Monday. Um, we have four editors working round the clock trying to edit it. We have to lock it on Sunday of this week. So, so. it'll be on the air in exactly 13 days. So getting yeah. a little close. But uh, we're really pleased with how it's coming along. I think, you know, when it's all said and done, um, we hope you guys will 
like it as much as we do. The, the robots are not as convincing as I'd like <laughs> right now, but they'll be much better. Yeah, by hopefully the with some p- quality post work. Exactly. Now I know that the biggest question that's going to come up about this announcement, which actually I'm surprised there wasn't a question about here, is. What does this mean for the zombie season? I was Damon? going to ask you that question, actually, Carlton. <laughs> Were you? Yes. Was it in your? Was it in your? It's right here, here, actually. It's. Let's a, just jump right in there, and then we'll go back to the rehash. Yeah, then we'll go in, in rehash. Well, while you find that, I'll play a little banjo. Oh, that's not. That's good. Oh, you've been. Uh, We've been working on it. Yeah, here it is. Hey, Damon and Carlton. Uh, this is from Peruvian Idol. One post in the last 90 days. Mike here with just one post in the last 90 days. A nice healthy number, to say the least. I just wanted to congratulate you on the announcement that Lost will run for three more seasons. However, does this mean that there won't be a season seven with zombies? I was really looking forward to that. Maybe you could do a spinoff and introduce the zombie show in the final season of Lost, a la Grey's Anatomy. Keep up the good work, and don't let your massive new deals go to your heads. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, well, uh, we will have to enter a separate negotiation with ABC about the zombie season. As currently planned, unfortunately, we actually are going to be ending just shy of the zombie season. And, you know, in all of the kind of frenzy of negotiations, um, we never really fully resolved what we were going to do about the zombie season. And zombies are very difficult to negotiate with, traditionally. <laughs> they are not interested in the same things that, that we are in our mortal life. Um, but uh, we'll do our best. We'll yeah. see what we can do. At least maybe a zombie feature would be good. All right, now let's travel okay. back in time like Desmond um, and do a little bit of rehashing. Last night's episode, The Man Behind the Curtain, written by uh, Drew Goddard and Elizabeth Sarnoff. Um, and Elizabeth Sarnoff and Drew Goddard, uh, and it was a uh, you know it was, it was an episode that really fired people's imaginations, I think, and it, it obviously involved a very significant advancement of the show's mythology because now uh, we don't just have Ben; we now have sort of made manifest this character of Jacob, and you know we saw did we we saw something in there? I'm not sure what I saw. Some uh-huh. people say they saw Locke in a wig. I don't... Uh, <laughs> Some people say it was Christian Shepard with a bad hair job. Wow. Some people say they didn't see anything. Other people saw a very strange eyeball and uh, were, were wondering what that was all about. I guess it's all a matter of interpretation, isn't it? Um, but this is one of those things where, you know, we write the script in a certain way. Uh, we want to show something. Then you get in the editing room and you kind of... Um, you know, you kind of wonder, are we showing too much? Are we showing not enough? And then, obviously, it goes out over the airwaves. And, um, you know, we were hoping to create um, a TiVo moment purposefully. And it, it, was, it would appear that we have achieved that. Um, you know, we, unfortunately, will probably frustrate you by not saying too much about Jacob. But I think that it would be premature for us to discuss Jacob in any detail, as it will spoil upcoming stories. I mean, I, we will say this. There's... You know, Jacob is is more of a question for season four than he is for season three. Uh, we sort of see the rest of the mission of season three dealing sort of more pragmatically with the others that we have established. Um, so yeah, la- last night was a heavily mythological episode. You know, a lot of stuff with the Dharma Initiative and 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 learning a little bit about Ben. Um, although we left out some some very big story beats, um, but uh, but ultimately this is all set up so that the remainder of the season can really play on the characters kind of that we know and love and kind of get to this. Or know and hate. Or know and hate, that's right. And get to this confrontation between the two camps. And, you know, I think it's interesting because we sort of felt like the flashback story was telling us a lot about, you know, about Ben's origin. We realized that he was lying, that he was not, in fact, born on the island, that he came as a recruited member of the Dharma Initiative. And we really learned a lot about the Dharma Initiative's uh, interrelationship with the others, and we saw that the others actually purged the Dharma Initiative. They took some members of the Dharma Initiative and they inculcated them into the others. The we rest of them we were... We didn't see that. Well, it was referred to. You know, really? Ben says at the end, uh, you know, me and, and, and a few others, basically. He, may, he says some line, basically, about how there were some people who weren't purged. Who weren't smart... Who were... Smart, smart enough, enough to... To, to yeah. not get purged. Interesting. But now we do know that the, the others basically wiped out the Dharma Initiative and that... Uh, I could use a good purging. <laughs> you apparently can today. I, I mean, could. my God, that or a uh, you know a double espresso. I'm a little curious. Obviously, I think we're sort of ignoring the uh, 
the proverbial elephant in the room here, which is John Locke. John Locke gets, takes a takes a bullet in the gut. Um, what is he dead or what's going on there, man? Wow. Well, it's sort of uh, a shocking ending. You know, um, he didn't look dead when the show was over, which I was very relieved to see. Is he dead now then? Um, if I was a betting man, I would not bet on John Locke being dead. I'll bet you five dollars he is. Okay, I'll take that bet. You're on. All right. Wow. That's cool. That's going to pay for some good commissary fruit in a box. I'm really curious to see what the outcome of that bet is. Um, why do you think, um, Carlton, if you had to, if you were a betting man? I am a betting now man. I just proved that you are. I don't usually bet, but now I have. Um, Does that violate any kind of, you know, FCC rules if we bet on the show? As long as, you know, as long as no money is actually exchanged. So okay. if you were to win the $5, I just wouldn't give it to you. And then, <laughs> and then we, well. You're making this up like as you, you're going along. Like, like what do you mean? Can like you, know you said, you lost the $5. You, I wouldn't want to be, you know, I wouldn't want to be sued by the, uh, the FCC here. Right. Because if, I don't, I think. <laughs> They're going to sue you? They I, can't sue you. I, I don't really know if we're governed by, you know, the rules of the podcast are sort of very <laughs> vague. I think we can do pretty much whatever we want. Why did, uh, why did Ben shoot Locke, Carlton? <laughs> Ben took Locke out to see Jacob as sort of a litmus test. He wanted to find out if, in fact, John Locke really was special, and if John Locke could see or hear Jacob, that would indicate that Locke was special. So when Locke did hear Jacob, that really got, that freaked Ben out. That was a threat to Ben and his primacy, so he led him over to the pit and he shot him because he doesn't want his leadership of the others challenged by John Locke. Hey, let's go to some let's go to some questions. Okay, I've got an awesome question here for you. Greetings, Lord Darlton. <laughs> posted by Finn McCool five five five. Can I guess how many posts in the last ninety days? Yes. Just just based on what, what I already know. I'm gonna go with seventy five. Four. Wow. Four. Okay. You are so wrong. I'm sorry, Finn. Finn. Finn, you are so McCool. All I right. love you. All right. Break it down for me. My liege. I have noticed that every season of Lost so far has generally followed two different plot lines. Season one, surviving on the island, getting to know it, everybody getting to know each other. Season two, learning about the hatch and the drama initiative and getting to know the tail section survivors. Season three, Desmond's weird psychic powers and getting to know the others. Is this pattern intentional? And if it is, will this trend continue in the new shorter seasons? We we actually do design, you know, big arcing themes at the beginning of every season. So, you know, I would actually say that we do a little bit more than just kind of two storylines. Like this year, it wasn't <laughs> just about Desmond's psychic powers and, and telling Charlie that he was going to die and learning more about the others. I think it was, you know, if anything... You know, the, the first construct that we were talking about for the entire season, aside from the meta construct of unveiling the others, was Juliet, you know, really introducing this character. And when you, and I think when you look back at season three and you watch it all in one burst, you really see how much that one character, you know, drove the story and a lot of the conflict in almost every single episode. Ben we had already introduced. We knew he was going to be the big bad, and we'd done a lot of cool stuff with him this year as well. So I would also kind of put that under the... Um, Ben's surgery is another big sort of storyline that we did. Um, you know, no disrespect intended, but I would agree with Finn McCool that those all fall into the category of getting to know the others. Getting to know the others. Yes. All right. Well, fair um, enough. Look, we design each season like a book. We see them as, uh, we, have, we actually draw little pretty covers for them, and we, um, and we flip through them. Uh, season three was the sort of season about the others, and we do design each season around... A concept, and really the first one was sort of the realization that they were actually stuck here on the island, and you know, sort of their kind of you know, getting to know the island is actually a fairly uh, and each other is a fair kind of statement. And season two was about the hatch, and season three is about the others. And I think when you watch the finale, you'll get a pretty good idea what season four is going to be about. You won't kind of necessarily know where it's going to go, but we do launch uh, the story in the direction that will define what the book of season four will be. All righty. Um... Walt, comic book, and Jacob. By retinal scan, 156 posts, last 90 days. Carlton, in Walt's comic book, which was Flash and the Green Lantern, and I know you're not a huge comic book aficionado, but fortunately for both of us, retinal scan sort of breaks down the plot for us here. The superheroes capture an alien with powers. They think he is a threat, but he is not. The alien remains in prison for 15 years, during which it contracts cancer from the radiation of the experiments. 
If I were that alien, I would say, help me. Is Jacob an alien or some type of non-human intelligence that is being held and used for human purposes? Wow. And do not dodge, my friend. <laughs> do not. Uh, I have to dodge. I mean, if I, do- if I don't dodge, you know, party's over. I mean... So you're saying he could be an alien. Well, no, he's not an alien. Well, there you go. Okay. That's he's not an alien. Answer. All right. But the rest of it I'm dodging. <laughs> Seriously, was that The Purge? Posted by <laughs> Muscle Bob Buff Pants. 63 posts in the last 90 days. DNC, please tell me that we will see more of The Purge. <laughs> That seemed way too quick and way too unfulfilling to be the war between the Dharmas and the hostiles. I mean, what about Dr. Cam Candle and his arm loss? What about Rosinski and Kelvin? Where were they during the purge? Was this episode supposed to wrap up the Dharma storyline or only give us a taste of things to come? Only a taste of things to come. I mean, I think we saw a good number of Dharma people get killed. We don't really need to see them get gassed again. Yeah. So, I you know, I want to see that, that was again. a pretty, you know, that that was like sort of the one fell swoop. But obviously, I, you know, there are definitely illusions earlier in the show, even when Ben is a kid, that there is some skirmishes going on. So right. like most wars, um, you know, uh, like, for example, when the Redcoats sort of um, came over and were sort of trying to keep the colonists in line, the colonists started attacking and, and, atta- and attacking and attacking and attacking and attacking and Gradually, they, they began to sort of build up a militia, and the next thing you know, there was a full-on revolution. So we sort of showed you uh, a key... All right, wake up, Carlton. <laughs> I didn't realize we were doing American history here. Well, when you, when you, when you, by the way, when you get to, like, the Civil War, I like that. Wake me back up. All right. <laughs> we, uh, we will see how Dr. Candle lost his hand. Yes, we definitely want to. And we will find out how Montan lost his arm. There's a lot. Next season is basically all about missing limbs. Disembodied limb season. Exactly. I'd like to see Rousseau's flashbacks. Would you? I really would. So would I. Yeah. Um, Maybe we should write them. Kelvin, (laughs) all this is good. Yeah, I mean, look, there's definitely more to learn about the history of the Dharma Initiative. As long as it has nothing to do with the American Revolution. (laughs) As long as it has nothing to do with American history, that's going to be good. Jacob uh, Confined, posted uh, by It's All in Hurley's Head. Two posts in the last 90 days. Damon and Carlton, love the show. You guys are doing an awesome job. Is Jacob confined by Ben? I noticed in last night's episode the line that seems to be drawn on the ground in the cabin. I also noticed the same powdery substance was in the chair that he was sitting in. Was this substance made to confine him, or is it just a nice side benefit? Thanks, and keep up the good work. Um, I think that there's kind of a couple of possible explanations. One explanation is that... Yes, that substance combined with other things perhaps might be keeping Jacob confined. The other explanation is that the volcano that Annie was making spewed out a lot of ash, and that ash happened to fall in a nice symmetrical pattern around the cabin. Oh, yeah, what's up with Annie? I mean, that little girl that, uh, like, if I may ask a little follow-up, because I'm curious. Yeah, sure. That Ben was hanging out with and made those... You know, did she? Did he kill her in the purge too? Where was she? What happened? What's going on there? I, you know, is I that would, yet yet another question think, you have no intention of answering? I, I will answer that by saying that that is a chapter of Ben's story that I think we very much would like to see in the show Lost. Oh, excellent! And now we know that we will, since there's only forty eight chapters left. Forty eight tiles in the mosaic, and, my friend, and thirty five podcasts. <laughs> Why thirty five? Can we have a special double podcast? I don't know. Sharks and Shanties, Damon, posted by Ice Cold Dharma. Two posts in the last 90 days. Wow. Hey, guys, after Man about after man Behind the Curtain, I'm sure you'll be bombarded with questions, so I'll save you some time and ask the most important one. What the heck is that Dharma shark, and where has it been <laughs> since we last saw it? Does it have a name? Is it somehow related to the question of where Michael and Walt are? Have they been eaten by the shark? If not, will we be seeing it again? If you're having any, any trouble answer, if you're having trouble answering any of those questions, perhaps you can at least expand upon Jacob. Invisibility. Please don't say he's a character from Heroes. Maybe he's a phantom or not invisible at all. Maybe some sort of prisoner of Ben, uh, of Ben's, and he was hidden in that shanty. Chase. Wow, I, I'm much more comfortable talking about the Dharma shark, um, and I think, are we going to see it again? Sure. Um, yeah. One of the things that we uh, we learned this year is that the Hydra was a station that would be f- routinely flooded so that they could bring in sharks and dolphins and do experiments on them. So 
And we will reveal here in a podcast exclusive the Dharma Shark does in fact have a name, and his name is Jim. No, I thought it was Ezra. It is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're okay. It's Ezra well, James. Yeah. <laughs> Ezra James Sharkington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, oh no, I'm turning into you. <laughs> yes, okay, so you will be seeing Ezra <laughs> James Sharkington wow. his phenomenal Dharma laden flashback. I just, now, the know, podcast just jumped the shark, man. Right? That was it. We were doing really well. We're never going to make it to 35 more of these things. Wait, dude. We're done. That's it, Ezra <laughs> James Sharkington. <laughs> you know how much people love the episode when we found out how Jack got his tattoo? Well, wait till you find out how Ezra James Sharkington got his Dharma tattoo. <laughs> He's like, wow. what if he got it? Wait, what if Ezra James Sharkington got his Dharma tattoo for Bai Ling? Then she can come back and finish that six episode arc she's talking about. He can be like, I will bite your face if you do not give me a Dharma tattoo. We're never even going to make it to next week's podcast. This is it. ABC's going to pull us. I totally buy that that shark is from the Thailand. I'm just saying, we've done wackier stuff on this show. That's true. How long right. can Lee hold her breath? Carlton, I'm going to bring it down with a little bit of a serious... This is my final no, question. I thought that was a serious question. <laughs> Daddy Lay it lo- on me, baby. Daddy loved me syndrome. <clears throat> Um, posted by Coot421, that's 31 posts in the last 90 days. Tonight's episode was good, but seriously, what's with this ongoing theme? Locke, Jack, Hurley, etc., and now Ben? Is everything alright with both of you at home? <laughs> if disappointments can't be mended by both of you being part of a hit TV show, I don't think anything will solve that. <laughs> That's the question. I'm laughing on the outside, but I'm crying on the inside. Oh my god, our lives are so miserable. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, you know, there's no easy answer to that question. If anybody out there actually has an awesome relationship with their father, please let us know all about it. And write, us, will, write us so that we can share that vicariously. And, yeah, we will, we will create a character on the show who has an awesome relationship with their father and is slightly more interesting than a can of paint. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and his name can be Ezra J. Shrek. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, I hope you've had as much fun as we have today. Uh, All right, I'm saying goodbye. Bye-bye. That's about it for this podcast. Thanks for joining us. Catch us again next time for a prehash of the season finale. Until then, be sure to check out lost.abc.com to submit your own fan questions or just relive the latest episodes. Greatest Hits airs Wednesday, May 16th from 10 to 11 p.m., only on ABC. Thank you.